Hello my lovely darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm delivering part 4 of Sexy Little Saint. Uh, the last part I uploaded I think two weeks ago, it was called Sanctified in Blood. Yeah, it was on the 4th of September. Uh, I hope you like this one as well, this is the continuation. Uh, please watch it until the end, like or dislike it and share it everywhere you can. This is the best way you can indirectly support me. If you however prefer to be more direct, my Patreon and merch store are down in the description. I also have a Discord, if you have any fan art you would like to share with me, you know, post it there. I will most definitely see it. Uh, also if you're new here and think I deserve it, please leave a subscription and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful darling doll army. Now, enjoy the show. Your eyes opened slowly as the buzzing of your alarm clock awoke you. For some reason, sleep hadn't felt as rejuvenating as it usually does. You were tired. So tired. You raised your body. Morning! How was sleep? giggled your roommate, Kiana. The girl was already on her feet and putting on her uniform. As per usual, her veil was nowhere to be found. You didn't answer her as you slowly slumped towards your belongings. Not good, huh? said the girl. You should be happy. The Lord Inquisitor is coming today. Hearing her say that did enhance your mood a little. Otto Apocalypse, Lord Inquisitor of the Church, was the son of the late Saint Clare. While he was usually busy with politics, he took one day every month to visit your school, the prestigious Saint Clare's Academy. After putting on your own uniform, you followed Kiana outside. You two were almost too late for the morning assembly. Quietly, you opened the door to the auditorium was already packed with students. I don't think we can sit today, you said more to yourself than to your friend. Not wanting to stick out too much, you joined the other late arrivals who were standing and quietly behind the back rows. While everyone waited for the assembly to begin, someone next to you, a girl from a grade above, mumbled to a girl to her right. Have you heard? This month, the Inquisitor only wishes to see a select group of students. You really didn't want to eavesdrop, but you couldn't help it. Yes, it's about some sort of program with another school, answered the other. The girl giggled. <laughs> Do you think we will allow boys at our school now? Seriously, Rita, can you only talk about boys? The two now began arguing and you turned your attention back to the front of the auditorium. A small figure approached an almost too large podium. It was your mother's superior and principal, Teresa. Despite her small stature, she was in her early forties. She began the assembly like any other, greeting her students, talking about the latest events, before she raised her voice. Also, as you may know, the Lord Inquisitor is visiting us today, but he will only speak directly to a small group of students this month. Whispers went through the crowd. I will now list the names of the girls he will be talking to. After the assembly, you are to report at the White Chapel for further instructions. She began listing the names. A few of which were students you heard about, while others you had no idea who they were supposed to be. You did notice, however, that the girls on the list all seemed to be from 10th to 13th grade. You gasped when your own name fell. Lucky, mumbled Kiana. I'm sure your name will come next, sister, you said with a smile. However, three minutes later, Teresa had finished her list, and Kiana was amongst them. I'm sorry. You actually said to your roommate. But Kiana just shrugged. 
You two have been roommates and friends for five years now. Surely your friendship could survive this, right? It's fine. She sounded defeated. But why would Otto want to talk to you directly? You shrugged. I would love to accompany you, said your roommate. But I really don't want to miss breakfast. After the assembly was over, you and the other students separated into two groups. And without saying anything, you approached the White Chapel. It was the most northern building of St. Clair's Academy. It was mostly used as a place to ask for forgiveness for one's sins. You had never seen it from the inside. One of your teachers was already waiting in front of the chapel's doors. When you hear your name, please enter. Remember to be disciplined under the Inquisitor's eyes, and remember that you are representing the school in front of the highest body of government. Your mother superior will reprimand any failings, barked the teacher. And you gulped. Of course, you understood how serious this was, but you were feeling very anxious regardless. Your teacher continued. By now, you are probably wondering why you were selected. Only students with a defect of category 4 and 5 of the upper classes were selected. Your parents have been informed of the potential outcome of today, and they agreed. I will now name the order. Please form a line. Wait, your parents already knew what was happening here? You were somewhere in the middle, and then slowly the tiny side door of the chapel opened, welcoming the first girl. Ten minutes later, she left with a white grin on her face. And just like this, slowly the lion advanced, until it was your turn. With a lowered head, you entered the white chapel. Just like the outside of the building, the inside looked just as plain. However, what did catch you off guard was a very extravagant stained glass window under the altar. It depicted St. Clair's resurrecting a wounded soldier with her defect. Next, you noticed a black desk propped up in front of the altar. A man with blonde hair sitting behind it. Otto Apocalypse, Lord Inquisitor of the Church, first son of St. Clair herself. He was big, with broad shoulders. His ice blue eyes were fixated on you as you approached slowly. Greetings, he said in a deep and soft voice. Please, sit. He pointed at a tiny stool in front of his desk. With a soft thank you, you sat down. Otto folded his hands under his chin. By now you are probably very curious as to what this is all about, right? He asked with a soft smile. This up close in person, he seemed much more human than on TV or when he was presenting a speech in the assembly hall. You could see little imperfections, almost unnoticeable wrinkles, light bags under his eyes, and a very tiny scar under his nose. He seemed much more approachable, like someone can trust. Otto pulled up a file. Your defect no longer human has been classified as a category 4 hazard. You got In Germany, quirks or defects, as they were more commonly called, were put in five categories based on their destructiveness. Most defects were category 1 or 2, which meant a light hazard to society. Category 2 was mostly made up of people with visible defects, also called mutation quirks. No longer human, he read out loud. A beautiful name, very fitting. You felt uneasy. I want to know a little more about you, more specifically, he pulled out more documents. These documents are both detailed and 
not. They lack a personal touch. Could you tell me more about this incident from your elementary school days? Horror overcame you. This incident had been the first time your defect manifested, and it had ended in the death of someone. This incident, you started, is the reason my defect was evaluated to be a class 4 and not 3. You tried to look away from him, but his presence was too intimidating to look away. I was bullied in elementary school. While it often got physical, my defect didn't really do anything except make them more angry. I think the hallucinations weren't causing them to fly f into frenzy yet, but... You paused. It was painful to think about it. Everyone gets affected different, ever so slightly, as everyone sees and hears different things under the influence of my defect. This bully, he... A tear rolled down your face. He shoved me down a flight of stairs. My arm still hurts sometimes from that. I could have died. The image of the boy's face haunted your mind. He had this horrified expression. His mouth moving quickly. As if he has a heated discussion, but no words left his mouth. Otto leaned back ever so slightly, listening carefully to your story. Then he just turned around, screaming, racing up the stairs to the roof, and then... And then... Enough, interrupted Otto. In this new world we live in, stories like this are an unfortunate reality. I assume this defect of yours is the reason Teresa was so interested in you joining St. Clair's. You nodded. The vetting process for St. Clair's was simple. Have a category 3 or above defect, and with that impress a member of the faculty on the evaluation on the evaluation day, followed by an entrance exam. Teresa told me what she saw, said Otto with a smile. You blushed. Usually when people recovered from the frenzy, they didn't remember what they saw. Would you like me to tell you what she saw? Would you like me to tell you her experience? You shook your head. Well, maybe that's for the best. He chuckled and then paused. Honestly, I like you, child. You remember me of my own youth. He finally said with a soft smile. You probably guessed it by now, but this is about more than just your abilities. You nodded. Germany recently has been opening its borders. As you probably know, when defects first appeared, we shut down everything to deal with the beginning crisis as efficiently as possible. He carefully put your files back. And then gave you a paper. We have an agreement with this prestigious UA high school in Japan. The only school, to my knowledge, that has given birth to more powerful heroes than St. Clair's. You opened your mouth slightly. I can guess where this is going. You mumbled. And Otto laughed in response. <laughs> yeah, a transfer program has been established with the school's principal. Starting this year, we will send one of our students over to study under their curriculum. I hope I don't have to explain why this is so important. Right. If I choose you, you would be representing your country. 
You could feel your neck hair stand up. It all made sense now. So, my parents knew about this before me? That's a little strange. Otto chuckled. <laughs> that was Teresa's idea. Otto looked you up and down. Would you be willing to go? Your eyes widen. Yes, you said happily. Great. Then, wake up. Your eyes flew open. Your breathing was uneven. Your heart racing. Sweat pouring down your face. Where were you? You quickly looked to your left and right. Everything was so white and clean. You could instantly tell this was a hospital. A sharp pain rinsed through your chest when you moved. What was happening? Suddenly the door to your room flung open. A man in black attire and a grey scarf entered. Uh, you're finally awake, he said in Japanese. Wo bin ich? You asked confused, and he blinked. Uh, you know I don't speak German, right? You shook your head. The memories of the past few months slowly returned. This was your homeroom teacher. I, uh, something, something. And you were on a school trip or something, and your boyfriend was... Your boyfriend was... Where's Bakugo? You asked. Your teacher raised both of his hands in defense. The boy's fine. We saved him three days ago. Your face turned into a frown. Come on. You were knocked out for five days. This must have been very stressful for you. Huh? You nodded. Well, I just wanted to check up on you. Katsuki is in the waiting room. Said he can't look at you just lying there. But guess that's over. Talk to you when you're back at UA. Then your teacher waved you a quick goodbye. A few silent minutes passed. You wondered where your stuff was. Then you looked down at yourself. Hospital gowns. You had worn your St. Clair's uniform regularly for about five years now. It felt weird wearing something else. Vulnerable, even. Then the door opened for a second time. A blonde boy with crimson eyes entered. Bakugo. You smiled. Teach said you're fine now. He slowly walked up to your bed. Hey, Bakugo. He grinned. <laughs> you missed the most exciting parts. You tilted your head. Alright, alright. Here, here's the story. First of all, as soon as the portal closed, the villains were going wild. This blonde bimbo was going crazy. Probably got hit by a quirk, wasn't she, huh? Anyways, then this lizard guy put her in a chokehold and... Your boyfriend started a torrent of words as he tried to sum up the events of the past five days. And then All Might punched this guy so hard he leveled an entire city block and... You wished you could have been there. With a sad smile, Bakugo finished the story of his escape. It's just... I hate being the reason All Might can no longer do his job, but... When he pointed at that camera and said, Now it's your turn. I don't know. That was inspiring. You gently took Bakugo's hand. You're not the reason All Might can no longer fight. You said softly, and he looked you straight in the eyes. It's their fault, not yours. Stop trying to always be the reason for everything. If it weren't for the leak, none of this would have happened. He looked away and blushed. I love you, you said. 
Quietly, he answered, and me you. Then a thought came to you. Hey, uh, where's my phone? You asked suddenly. He scratched the back of his head. Uh, they're all your stuff with you, so, uh... He looked into a small nightstand that stood next to your bed. Ah, there we go. He gave it to you. Japan is seven hours ahead, right? You asked and Bakugo shrugged. What are you talking about? You looked at your phone's clock. It must be 10 a.m. in Germany right now. And if the Sinclair schedule was still the same... Hey, Bakugo, I need to call someone. You said with a somber tone. And quickly you typed a number. It rang once, twice, and then... Hallo? asked a female voice. Hey, Kiana, wie geht's? You asked. The girl on the other hand squealed in excitement. Wie geht's dir, heilige Scheiße? Du hast doch gesagt, du willst jede Woche anrufen. Ich dachte, du hast uns schon vergessen. It was nice hearing the voice of your friend again. Bakugo, meanwhile, walked over to a chair that stood in a corner. While he couldn't understand your language, he could tell by your voice that this conversation would take a while. He was just glad you were back in the world of the living.